I'm excited to announce that I'm going to be publishing my first book this year, my first book through a major publishing company. And when I made this announcement on Facebook, I got a lot of questions like, what was your process like? Can you do a video on how you got to this point? And so hence, here I am. And this is also a great addition to a playlist that I already have on my channel, which is about helping Black writers achieve their goals in communicating voice well and communicating their specific messaging well. And then, of course, like this video is going to talk about how to get your message out there to the public, to your audience. So this is going to be a two part video. The beginning of this uh, series of this conversation is going to be a little bit more about just the general process to which I got to this point of being able to publish with a major uh, publishing company. I don't know how much I can share in the beginning, which is why there's gonna be a part two because I'm still at this time of the recording gonna be reviewing the contract and seeing what I can say publicly and what I can't announce publicly. So stay tuned for the part two, but I'm going to give a general outline of the process that I went through and how I did this most importantly without having a literary agent. And we'll talk about whether or not there is a pro or a con to doing that. But nevertheless, let's get into it. Let me tell you how I got to this point of getting a book proposal approved by a major publishing house. So we're gonna go through how long the process took to find a publisher and put the proposal together and then what the publisher did on their end to decide whether or not they were going to work with me as an author, and then how I phrased my pitch to show that I was qualified to write this book. Again, I don't know how much I can share publicly right now, so you're probably wondering what kind of book is it? What are you going to write about? And I'm going to keep that for the second part of this video, and then I can give you more details. But I was just so excited to share at least this brief bit of information on Helping those people out there, especially if you're like a freelance writer, a freelance journalist right now who's trying to navigate all the layoffs that are happening in the industry and you need to pivot, this could be a good way to use your expertise, your talent to make some extra income passively, especially. Okay, I think I've introed enough, so let's get into the actual advice. So first, how long did the process take? I pitched this book in December. So right now we are in spring, we are in March, <laughs> March, April-ish, right? So that means it took at least four to five months for this specific publisher to go through their process. I don't know if every publisher takes that long. Uh, I guess I can also say this, but again, I can't give too much information. I have also pitched a different book to a different publisher and that process didn't seem to take as long that I gave the proposal to one editor that I thought would be interested in the book that I wanted to write and basically heard back from the publishing company within a week of sending the proposal. Whereas with this book where I'm officially getting a contract, I pitched, I sent the proposal to the editor in December, like I said, and then it took four to five months to actually get to the point of signing a contract where I'm going to definitely publish and write the book with this publishing company. I know I said I was gonna talk about how I phrased my proposal as the last step, but let's actually make it number two. How did I phrase my proposal? I think that it was very helpful that I was doing the work that I was proposing to write about in my book way before I went to a publisher and asked if they would be interested in working with me as an author to write this book. What do I mean by that? So I have been working as a journalist for a while now. I've been doing freelance writing at least since 2018, more consistently now, especially after the pandemic. And I have worked in different spaces such as leadership coaching, such as fundraising, such as education reform, the list goes on and on. I'm a jack of all trades or Jacqueline of all trades. And this book that I propose to the publisher is within one of those realms where I've had experience doing work for a total combination of a decade. So because I had that 
background already where I was doing this work and I was getting paid to do this work outside of writing a book, I was able to demonstrate that I was the right person for the publishing company to work with in order to write this book. So in sum, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that you need to be an expert on whatever it is you're proposing to write about. And this is mainly for nonfiction, I should say, because I'm not writing a fiction book. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> so if you, I, I forgot to say that at the beginning of the video, but if you're watching this video, this is about nonfiction writing versus fiction writing. So it helps to be a expert in the specific field that you are writing about or you're proposing to write a book about. You have to demonstrate that your resume shows that you are qualified to speak on this topic professionally and expertly in order to convince the publishing company that they should work with you. And also demonstrated that I've received accolades and a co-sign from leaders in this space that I am truly an expert to speak on this work. So for example, I've done a TED talk. I put that in my proposal slash resume that I submitted to the publishing company. I have received uh, awards from different committees that are focused around women and women in media in particular. So I also made sure I included that in my resume. All of these things that you've accomplished over the years as a expert in your field, these are things that you need to make sure that you're keeping track of and that you're going to boldly say that you've done in your proposal to demonstrate that you are the right person again for the publishing company to work with. This is not a time to be shy. This is not a time to be timid or humble. You need to make sure that you have some clear clout for what you're trying to write about. And when I say clear clout, I mean that this are reputable institutions that are saying that you are a person who is considered an expert in this field. Additionally, my proposal, and not to make this video too long, uh, I think I'll figure out a way to break down the different sections of my proposal in a future video or maybe in the other opportunity that I'm going to share in a moment. But in my proposal, I also had to think about why is this book needed right now? So I think if there was any part of my proposal that I needed to spend the most time on and really be thoughtful and mindful about what words I'm choosing to explain the concept of my book, it is why was it relevant right now? And I think that's also important when you think about the timeline that you have to go through, especially with some publishers like this one that I went through which was a lot longer than probably the usual process, or maybe it's average, I don't know. When you're going through the proposal process, just assume that you're not, you're not gonna publish the book until like a year from when the contract is signed with the publishing company. So you need to think of a book concept that is gonna be relevant to an audience, a very, very large audience, for perpetuity also, which I'll go into in a minute. So that means for a very, very long time or an indefinite period of time, but it's also going to be extremely relevant on the date of publishing the book. That sounds contradictory. So let me break that down a little bit more. Let's say, for example, that you're writing a book about the history of pop music. Pop music is going to be relevant for perpetuity, which means there's always going to be people who are interested in reading books about what pop artists are doing differently from one decade to another, or just in general, why pop music is considered pop music in the first place. Like why do specific people be, are categorized as pop artists versus any other category of music? That's something that's always gonna be talked about for a pretty long time. Now you have to think about in a year from now, if I sign a contract with this publisher, what is happening in the current culture that's going to make people immediately buy it on release date. So you can use something, some phenomenon that is happening recently in pop culture. Let's say that there's a new music trend that's been going on now that people thought were just, was just gonna be a phase, it thought it was just gonna last for one year, but now it's defied all odds and it's been going on now for the past five years. And it, right now it's reaching like a pinnacle where a lot of artists in this specific music category are getting a lot of Grammy awards and are uh, the top selling artists on the billboard charts who are making the most money on tours. If that's happening currently right now, and you've seen that it's a trend that's been going on for the past five years, that could be something that will pull an audience 
of book readers to want to buy your book immediately, even though this content will also be relevant for the future for someone who's going to be a pop culture historian and wants to know why this specific genre of music was so popular at the time that you published. So I hope that makes sense. It's a combination of what is relevant today to your immediate audience that's going to make them go out and publish it and purchase the book right away because the publishing company wants to make sure that they're going to obviously make money from it now, not later on in the future. They want to make sure that they see large book sales immediately. And then also you want to think about for your passive income sake and also for the sake of the publishing company, I'm sure as well, how is this going to continue to perform as a book that's going to be purchased for years to come? So that is how I phrased my pitch. So we talked about how long the process takes, how I phrased my pitch, and now we're going to talk about the parts of the proposal review process. Before I go into that, I did mention that I just gave a very brief rundown of how I put together my book proposal. Obviously, there's much more that goes into writing a comprehensive book proposal that's going to catch the eye of an editor and make them very eager to want to work with you. And for that, I'm excited to share that Skillshare has asked me and invited me to provide one on one consultation with people like you who are either freelance journalists and writers or someone who's aspiring to write a book and need some one on one attention to figure out how to do this successfully. So if you go to the link that's showing both on the screen and that will be in the description box of this video, you can go to schedule a consultation with me. It is not expensive at all. So if you go to the link in the description of this video, and also it should be showing up on the screen, hopefully somewhere, you can book some time with me. It's not too expensive and it is well worth your investment because that time that you spend into working with me one-on-one -on, -one on your proposal and figuring out what your freelance writing or book authorship process is going to look like, you're going to potentially earn thousands, if not millions more in your book sales in the future. So don't forget to go to the link in the description box of this video and the link that's showing on the screen to book a session with me. And thank you Skillshare for inviting me to do this course. And now part of the review process. I think this is, this is important to set up expectations for what an editor might do to properly vet your book proposal because you might think that when you're submitting this book proposal that it's only going to be seen by one person, the editor, and that's not always true. You may or may not have heard of beta readers and this is sometimes a step that authors who are already in a contract or in a deal with a publisher or who are self-publishing take to make sure that as they're writing their book, like as they're in the process of writing their book, that they are testing it out with the audience. For example, if they uh, want to see if this is really going to, if this book is going to perform really well in the market based on what their assumptions were when they first decided to start embarking on this project, they might choose a select handful of readers that represent the audience that they're going to try to sell to and ask them to read portions of the book, if not the whole book, and give them their feedback. I actually went through this process with my proposal and I went through this process where the editor basically gave my proposal and the sample chapter that I submitted for, through my proposal for the book to beta readers or to people who would potentially be the market for this book and asked them to rate my proposal to say, is this a book that you would actually want to buy? Uh, do you think that this author is truly the right person to write this book and give you other opinions, professional opinions about why this book is needed right now or in the future. And that's why it's very important to be thoughtful, like I said, again, about how your book is going to perform, not just today, but also in the future when you're writing your book proposal, because the editor is not the only one that's probably going to read it. They're also probably going to send it to beta readers who are the actual people who are in the market. So if you say one thing, like for your pop culture book and say, oh yeah, people are going to definitely want to read this because there are so many people winning Grammys in this specific pop category. But then the beta readers are like, we actually don't really care about this trend. It might be a really popular trend and maybe a lot of artists are making a lot of money making using in this genre, but I personally would not go out of my way to buy a book about this. Then the editor is going to say, well, you said one thing in your proposal, but the audience is saying another thing. So it's really important to be sure that you know what your audience is looking for today and in the future, because some editors or some publishing houses are going to actually put that 
theory to the test. Another process that I went through, so I actually got through that process pretty well. Uh, the majority of the beta readers that read my proposal said that I was qualified, I was the right person to write this book, and that it was definitely needed in the market that I was pitching for. So then after that, the editor then took my proposal finally to the editing board. So I guess there's a hierarchy where there are frontline editors, for lack of a better word. If there's a better word, I'll put it on the screen somewhere. And then there is the editorial board. So these are like the editor in chief or the managing editor. So the people who make the final, final decision about do we want to really invest in this author after going through the whole vetting process with the beta readers. And I'm happy to say that I also passed that <laughs> process. Uh, Go me. I think the I think that's the easiest part. I feel like that's the easiest hill to climb once you've gotten the supporting and backing of people who are actually in the market for buying your book. Because at the end of the day, the publishing house just wants to know: Are we going to make money from this? And another thing that came up was: Okay, is this going to be something that's searched a lot on search engines? So you have to also think about search engine optimization for the title of your book, for example, for the concepts that are going to be discussed in the book are people searching this actively online so that in such a way that your book would pop up at the top of search results when such book goes on sale right so editorial boards are basically doing the final run through and making sure that this is truly a marketable investment in you that they're going to pay you up front to write the book and then get a significant return on investment from that investment in you writing the book. And that's it. I didn't want to make this video too long. I wanted to announce that I'm very excited about this new stage in my career. Uh, I did self-publish a book a couple of years ago. It was a travel book. I always want to do a lot more work in this medium of book writing because I feel like that's my strong suit. So I wanted to make sure that I was diversifying where I was putting my writing skills in to make sure that I'm not just putting all of my eggs in one basket. And so I really feel blessed that I'm going to be embarking on this journey of becoming a author. And again, I can't wait to announce the publishing company that I'm working with because it's a very, very reputable publishing company. And uh, I can't wait to hopefully work with some of you through my Skillshare offer that I mentioned earlier to make sure that you also are able to pivot into this space if that's your interest, if that's what you're trying to do in this new changing market of freelance writing. One last thing I wanted to mention is that Leading Like a Lady is a nonprofit media company that is designed to provide affirming advice to women who are feeling insecure about their status in life. And of course, that deals with financial insecurity, career insecurity, and just feeling existential threats about what are you here for? What is your purpose in life, right? So I want to remind you to please subscribe to this channel, this YouTube channel, if you like content like this, if this is helping you in going through your thought process of where you're going next in your career, especially if you are a freelance writer like myself. And I want you to also share this video with others who you think it might benefit so that they can also subscribe to this channel. The more I see people liking and watching and subscribing based on these videos that I'm sharing, the more I understand what you are looking for as an audience so that I make sure that I'm truly providing the affirming advice that I'm claiming to provide to you through my mission statement. Just thought I would take this opportunity. I have also created this so you can see it and my mic is not covering it. Read to yourself every day to remind you that you are destined to thrive, not to just survive. We also have a bingo chart where you can make this a game for yourself. Write